Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavaj Pranam, Algosh to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, today I feel so fortunate and uh, blessed to welcome you back to the Bhakti Sangha Conference call, Maharaj. Thank you so much for giving your valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening the topic of Srimad Bhagatam. I'll hand out the call to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. My obeisance is all glorious to Prabhupada. Put up the verse. You have to. You have to put the verse up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sri Deva Uchu. Namaste Yagya Biryaya Yaya Se Utate Namaha Namaste Yasta Chakraya Namasupuru Utaye Translation The demigods said, O oh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, you are competent to give the results of sacrifice, and you are also the time factor that destroys all such results in due course. You are the one who releases the chakra to kill the demons. O oh Lord, possesses many varieties of name. We offer our respectful obeisances unto you. Verse 32. Yate gati nam trishrin ham isi tu paramam padam narvachino visargasya datu vedi tu arhati. Translation O Supreme Controller, you control the three destinations the motion to the heavenly planets versus human beings. You can see those two words sitting, go down the page a little. Just bring the page down a, a, a bit. Since you appear after you created this cosmic manifestation, your activities are impossible for us to understand. We therefore have nothing to offer you but our humble obeisances. Srila Prabhupada's purport, an inexperienced man generally does not know what to beg from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Everyone is under the jurisdiction of the created material world, and no one knows what benediction to ask when praying to the Supreme Lord. People generally pray to be promoted to the heavenly planets because they have no information of Vaikuntha Loka. Sri Madhavacharya quotes the following verse. Deva lokam pati lokat nirarach japiyat param trisribya paramam stanam vaishnavam vidusam gatihi. There are different planetary systems known as Deva loka, planets of the demigods, pati loka, the planets of the pitas, and naraya. The hellish planets. When one transcends these different planetary systems and enters into Vaikuntha, he sees the ultimate resort of the Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas has nothing to do with the other planetary systems. Omagyan timidandasya kina jana salakaya chaksun militam yenatas mai shri gurudeva maha ma o vishnu padaya krishna prastaya bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. 
Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Gurusesa, Sundiavadi, Paschatya De Sitarine, Panchakalpa, Tarubis, Chakri, Pasindu, Pevaja, Itanam, Bhavane, Bhyo, Vaishnavi, Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadakar, Sri Vasa, Devar, Bhaktivinam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So this verse is illustrated of the, the, the mood that people approach the Supreme Lord. No one, hardly anyone, approaches the Lord for devotional service. Most people approach the Lord for something material. They have this idea that the Lord is the order supplier. And uh, in other words, we are the order giver. We ask and he supplies. But according to the nature of the Supreme Lord, he is not anyone's order supplier. He is the order giver. He gives and we follow. That is the actual. So no one really wants to follow the Lord. Everyone wants to ask from the Lord. So that's, this is the trend. The Rupam Dehi, Yeso Dehi, Danam Dehi, Janam Dehi. Dehi means to give me. Give me wealth. Give me followers. Give me... Uh, what else? Give me uh, uh, good family members. They even ask for basic things. Give me a good job. I remember when I first uh, came in contact with spiritual movements back in the 1960s, the late 1960s, around the year 1970, I think it was. Uh, I came across this one movement. They used to chant mantras, uh, Vedic mantras. And some of those, not Vedic mantras, some of them were mixed in mantras. They were kind of concocted. They were praying to the Lord. Actually, they were praying to the demigods to give some material benediction. So I remember going to my first meeting with all of the group. There was a large group there. And the meeting was all about how people have achieved their material success. I couldn't, I couldn't find a good job for years. And then I would, now I'm praying, I'm chanting the mantras. And now I have a good job. I couldn't find a house that I really wanted. Now I got the house. So this is, and it was, the whole thing went on. And after going to one meeting, I decided to quit the group. I didn't think this was what spirituality was about. But this goes on, everyone, just like even in our society, people come to, our, come to the temple. They bring their gifts to the deity, sometimes some boga. And then they pray for something material. There was one lady, she was in the UK, in London. We have our temple, Bhaktivedanta Manor there. So she went before the deity and said, my dear Lord, my son, he has school, he's just beginning is uh, high school, and I want you, he has 10 subject matters. Please give him 10 A's in the 10 subject matters. So that was her prayer. I found out this about this later. It was told to me by someone who, who knew the situation. And then uh, when she uh, came back after the boy, Schooling was finished for that semester. 
she was not happy because her son only got nine A's. She would say, my dear Lord, I prayed for 10 A's and you only gave him nine. What happened? So this is, this is not prayer. This is not spirituality. It is simply merchandise. You go to the store, you pay your money, and then you get the product. So people think that the prayer is the, the money and the, the uh, Lord is the grocer or he is the merchant that supplies whatever you ask for. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, the Supreme Lord is not your gardener. He's not your security guard. He's not your, uh, you know, he's not your grocer. <laughs> So people approach the Lord for everything material. And here, and we see in this verse, it's a little bit greater. Now they want to get better material situations. So people want to go to Swarga Loka to enjoy more sense gratification and a longer life. So this is, the, this is very much prominent in the world today and has been prominent for a long time. That people approach God but God doesn't necessarily have to fill these desires, and most of the time he doesn't. If he's merciful, he sends that desire to the demigods, and he lets the demigods you know, handle it. <laughs> but most of the time, he just doesn't, doesn't even pay attention with that. Because the Lord is to be approached for service. It's like in certain... Scriptures, they say, give us our daily bread. They're asking the Lord for food. But Krishna is supplying food to the birds, to the animals, to the insects, to all living entities automatically without even asking for it. So to pray for material situations is not spirituality at all. It's just business. So we pray to the Lord, my dear Lord, please engage me in your service. My dear Lord, I am your servant. Please allow me to serve you. Srila Prabhupada used to say, there are some groups, they pray, my dear Lord, give us something to eat. And we as Vaishnavas, we say, my dear Lord, what did Mother Yasoda give you? for lunch today. <laughs> so, in other words, we we want to serve the Lord because that's our position. Jivar Sarupai Krishna and Nityadas. And people think, well, I have to ask from the Lord, but the Lord will take care of you, don't worry. He supplies whatever you need. That's automatic. And if it does, if he doesn't supply, there's a reason for that. So there's no need to pray for anything material or even for liberation. That's another form of prayer. So people pray for material control. People pray for peace and a nice environment. People pray for success and prosperity. People pray for liberation. So just like there is Panchopasanam, the five deities, so the people pray for, if they're praying to the Lord, Supreme Lord, for uh, material control, then they're worshiping Durga, not Krishna. If they're praying for peace in a nice environment and comfortable life, they're worshiping the sun god, Surya Dev. If they're praying for uh, material success, and they're worshiping Ganesh or Ganapati for prosperity and material gain. They're praying for liberation, they're praying for Lord Shiva. But if they're praying for devotion, if they're engaged in devotional service, then they're worshiping Krishna. So we may be engaged in devotional service, but if we have these other moods, then we're not actually worshiping the Supreme Lord, we're worshiping these other deities who are there to fulfill these desires here. 
So to worship Krishna is the Vaipum Samparo Dharma. You told Bhakti a hoaxa jay, a hoitiki, a priyata, a yatma, so proceed to take. To serve the Lord means to try to find out how to please the Lord. And finding out how to please the Lord means to ask his representative, the bona fide spiritual master, who is deputed by the Lord, empowered by the Lord, to guide the living entity back towards Krishna in devotional service. And the process of uh, devotional service is ayabila sita sunya jnana kamarana vritam anukulena krishna silanam bhakta uttamam. This verse we should meditate on because it's the foundation by which one can execute devotional service. And Rupa Goswami speaks this verse in the, the introduction to Bhakti Rasamatu Sindhu Nectar Devotion, where he explains that devotional service has to be for Krishna with a desire to please Krishna, free from karma, fruit of results, gyan, philosophical speculation on the absolute truth. It has to be free from all other forms of desires. That is pure devotional service. And that is the nature of the soul. The, the living entities are by nature part and parcel of Krishna. And our connection with Krishna is through devotional service. And when that devotional service is pleasing to the Lord, then one makes advancement. One can associate with the Lord directly by pleasing the Lord. And one gradually becomes purified from all material desires. And eventually, if they continue, then they reach the platform of love of God, which is the goal of devotional service. Now, this is the process. And it's a very, the process is quite simple, but it's not easy. And so you, you have to see those two words. It's simple, but it's not easy. Simple because, and Krishna says, manmana bhava mad bhakto mam yaji mam namas guru. Think of me. Become my devotee. Worship me. Offer your homage to me. He says, surely you will come to me. I promise you this. So Krishna gives the formula by which we can approach him. Think of him. And he says, think of me always. Practice that thinking of Krishna always. Think about how to serve Krishna. Think about how to worship Krishna. When we go to the temple, we see the deity there. We offer our obeisances to the deity. We take part in the RT ceremonies. These are all forms of worship. We can also do that at home. So this is the process. Very simple. Why is it not easy? Because we have material desires. Because we still desire these other benefit, benedictions from the material energy. Uh, therefore, it interferes with our activity of devotional service. It makes it very difficult. So, because of that, we struggle with devotional service. So, if we can be ayabila sita sunya, that means free from all other desires then it becomes easy. So you might say, well, I have material desires. What do I do? How can I execute devotional service when I still have material desires? There is a formula for that that is quite simple, but not easy. Again, back to those same analogy. Simple in the idea is just don't fulfill your material desires. You may be impelled or propelled in that direction to try to fulfill your material desires. But then again, the intelligence says, no, why should I waste time trying to fulfill these material desires? As it says here in this, uh, the verses we read, the first verse we read, that the results of sacrifice are given by the Lord. But then again, all of those results are destroyed in due course of time. So whatever we gain in devotional and material life is finished. There's no, nothing is left at the time of death. 
And most people struggle to enjoy whatever they achieve. And even if they, they either find themselves not unable to achieve their fulfillment through their material desires, or if they get the fulfillment of their material desires, it leaves them after some time, and then again, they struggle. So material life is just very difficult, but spiritual life is easy only if we are focused just like there is a story in the Mahabharata where Dronacharya is, uh, is teaching the Pandavas archery. So Yudhisthira is there, Bhima is there, and Arjuna is there. And so Dronacharya is giving his lesson. So he draws a circle on the ground and it's right near a tree. And he places a clay duck in the very high part of the tree. So he calls first Yudhisthira up. He says, stand in a circle, look up, pull back your bow. What do you see? Do you see the tree? Yudhisthira says, yes. Do you see the sky? He says, yes. Do you see the bird? He says, yes. And then Dronatarya says, sit down. And he goes to Bhima. And Bhima, he asks him to go stand in the circle. Look up, pull back your bow. What do you see? Well, I see, I see the bird. Do you see anything else? Yes, I see the tree. Well, sit down. Um, he goes to Arjun. Arjun is his best student. Stand in the circle. He does. Look up, pull back your bow. Do you see the sky? No. Do you see the tree? No. Do you see the bird? No. What do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Shoot. So Arjuna, he simply focused on the target, although there were so many other things in the environment. So in the same way, we are surrounded by attractions and distractions. We get distracted in our devotional service, and we get attracted away from devotional service by the allurements that Maya presents, which may also be in line with our desires. So if we fail to act on these things and simply focus on service to Krishna, then the process is very easy, simple, and very direct. And even though we have material desires through that one-pointed attention on Krishna, then all of these material desires start to decrease and gradually we are free, we are purified, and we develop attraction and love for Krishna. But it takes that kind of focus. And so Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dana Pran. Krishna is the source of everything. If we read these verses here, the demigods are glorifying the Lord in different ways. Throughout the Bhagavatam, the Lord, the Lord is glorified. Practically for everything. He's the beginning. He's the middle. He's the end. He is the source. He is the maintainer. He's the protector, provider. He is Brahman. He is Paramatma. He is Bhagavan. He is within the atom. He is outside of the atom. Everything in existence, both material and spiritual, is an element of the Lord's energy. And in many cases, the Lord directly. So Krishna is everything. You can't get away from Krishna. But we see Krishna in relationship to his energies, and therefore we focus on his energies rather than on him. So focusing on him is easy. It's simple, but not easy because of our material desires. But if we practice and become ekavrata, that means one-pointed, just like you'll see sometimes a person wants to achieve something very strongly, and they'll push everything else aside in their life and just focus on that. Um, the examples is a doctor is going to, 
you know, medical school. And he wants to graduate and get top. So he'll cut away all of his other activities in life and simply put his energy, time, and attention on developing the uh, curriculum and the education needed to get his uh, medical degree. So in the material world, people do that also. They focus on one thing in order to achieve it one point. So if we focus simply on Krishna, and which means focusing on devotional service to Krishna, which means associating with the devotees of Krishna, then the process becomes an easy, natural, and very joyful, joyful process. To fulfill material desires is a very difficult process. It doesn't bring any joy. Even the results are never up to the standard. And even if they are, they're lost in due course of time. So this is a material life. You can't win. And for the materialists, they can't stop playing the game. They struggle. Nunam pramata kurute vikarma yadindriya pritya pranoti asado maninaptanayam sanda priklesa deyasa deha. Because people cannot control their senses, they're always engaged in various types of activities, trying to satisfy the body, mind, and the intelligence. Never satisfied, always trying. But Krishna consciousness is very satisfying. Even a little advancement in the process of Krishna consciousness can give one satisfaction. But we're not interested in a little advancement. We're interested in actually developing the goal of, of human life. As it says, Atato Brahma Jigyasa, the goal of human life, is to inquire how can I develop my love for the Supreme Lord? What is my position? Who is Krishna? What is my relationship with Krishna? And what are the activities in that relationship? This is all part, these are the principles that make up a devotee's concern. I want to learn, just like if you, even in the material world, we like to learn about very important people. So there's some uh, sports heroes, there are some movie stars, there are politicians, or there's some interesting person in the material world. And so people, you know, center their lives around them. There are people who have died 20, 30, 40 years ago. And these people have become their, their fans. And they still read about them, collect things in relationship to them, even though they've been gone for so many years. So to worship a, a, a so-called great person in the material world, so-called, is uh, it's a natural tendency. But the, the actual natural tendency stems from our supreme tendency or our truly natural tendency is to worship Krishna. Therefore, we have to hear about Krishna. We have to serve Krishna. We have to find ways to worship Krishna. If we become Krishna addicted, just like Prabhupada says, the winos, Prabhupada was in the Bowery in New York. And he, had, he, he had to walk through the different streets with the different winos, the, the, the alcoholics who were laying on the street. And they would get, for 25 cents, they get a bottle of this cheap wine and they drink it. And before they're finishing that bottle, they're thinking about their next bottle. Uh, so in the same way, we should always be thinking, uh, what am I going to do next for Krishna? What am I, how am I going to serve Krishna? So a devotee who does that, they live happily and their minds are always, always in the right direction towards the lotus feet of the Lord. Because to achieve Krishna is not easy, but the process of trying to achieve Krishna is very joyful. <laughs> it's very joyful. Okay, so I'll stop there. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the last day, Maharaj. Uh, devotees, if anybody has any questions or uh, 
realization you'd like to share, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Jyoti Mataji, please go ahead, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Tanvad Pranam, Maharaj Ji. Please accept my respectful and humble obeisances at your lotus feet. And please kindly bless me. Uh, um, Maharaj Ji, my, uh, I have two questions to you. Uh, very first question is you said that uh, you may have the desires in material world. But it is a very intelligent thing that we should not try to fulfill it because we are going to waste a precious time after coming to devotion and knowing that what is the goal. And uh, that statement, it's not uh, hitting me very uh, clearly. I mean, there are cer certain desires of which I don't want to fulfill, but I'm forced to you know, act on that. And it will consume my lot of time and energy. So how it is practical to understand your statement and apply in my life and mm -hmm. grow in devotion? That, that you need to take, uh, take advice from a, a spiritual person by explaining your day-to-day -day life and what are you going through. But generally, to maintain the body is necessary. That's not a material desire, that's a requirement. Maintain the household by which we live is also not a material desire, it's a necessity if we have chosen the Grihasta Ashram, married life. Yeah. So there are activities that are required in order for us to live in this world. They're not considered to be material desires. What our material desires is something that's contrary to our devotional process. It leads us away from Krishna consciousness, like watching television. That's just giving an example. Uh, going to see the latest movie. <laughs> Worshipping the demigods for some benedictions, as we mentioned in the very beginning. These are material activities. These are material activities. And so this, these material activities take us away from Krishna. So in order to clarify what you have to you know, understand in terms of your day-to-day um, -day life of what is material and what is necessary for, you need to, uh, it says, yagnartha kamano yatra lokal yam kamabandhanaha. Kamakarta Kunteya. I forgot the last one. Samachana. Um, yeah, work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu must be performed. Therefore, unless it's done for Vishnu, it binds one to the material world. So you have to see what is the difference between karmic activity and required activities which are considered to be parallel to your devotional service. But then again, when we take care of our material needs and responsibilities, it's not about trying to uh, uh, you know, elaborate that process, do it in a very simplified way. You can live in a very gorgeous mansion or you can live in a very a nice simple house Whatever you, whatever you need to, to live in this world is considered to be acceptable. But don't be extravagant. If you're extravagant, just like we need, we need clothes. So that doesn't mean we fill up three or four closets full of clothes and spend all our time buying clothes and changing clothes. One of my... Uh, Dear God, brother, he's not a dear God, but he's a senior God, brother. What really inspired him in uh, Krishna conscious was when he, uh, he was sitting once a week, the family, this was way back in the 1960s, late 60s. The family used to come together once a week and sit together 
and have dinner. And so his mother, his father, himself, his sister, they would come together for Sunday dinner. And one, day, one Sunday, his uh, sister, she was in such distress, really full of distress. And then it was revealed why she was distressful. She had to go to this party and she was crying. She doesn't have anything to wear to go to the party. Closets. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I, I, I'm not able to. Hare Krishna Maharaj, your voice is breaking a little bit. Yes, yes, Maharaj. I'm sorry, that's my internet. I can't do anything about it. Could you please repeat a repeat uh, from the closet? What what was the explanation? Yeah, she had enough clothes to choose from, but still she was never she wasn't satisfied. So this devotee had that experience seeing his sister in that distressful condition that he, he understood no matter how much you have in a material life, you're never satisfied. Never satisfied. So that's an example. So um, live, take care of your material needs, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Yat karosi, yaranasi, yat jahosi dadasiya, yat tapasin kurteya, makurusham barapanam. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you perform, Krishna says, do it for me. So we have to live in this material world, but we don't have to live in the material consciousness. If we're living in material consciousness, then we are in the material world. Material consciousness means to try to improve or to satisfy our senses through the activities of material life. We we'll always find satisfaction in devotional service. Material activities are necessary but they are not the they're not the source of happiness. Nor should one try to re, re, receive happiness in material activities. If happiness comes, then that's fine. But if we have a desire to enjoy this material world in any way, that will disqualify us from making advancement in Krishna consciousness. That's all. Very simple. You can understand what I said, then you'll understand Krishna consciousness. You have to live. It's not about personal enjoyment. Hey, Maharaj Ji, uh, could you please correct me? Uh, I'm going to make one statement. Do you mean that uh, no matter how much the distress, distressful situation might be, or very strong, or very uh, stressful the situation, there will be a simpler solution to every problem, and that will be a Krishna consciousness a relative. Yeah, yeah all solutions. Yeah, Prahlad Maharaj explains that. He says material solutions to material problems are more problematic than the problems. If you want to solve problems, you have to go above the problem to at least to the mode of goodness and ultimately to spiritual. So if you read Srila Prabhupada's books, you hear Prabhupada's lectures, he explains everything. He spent so much time and energy giving us the whole process of Krishna consciousness in detail 
and explaining how to live in this world at the same time, how not to get entangled in this worldly activities. Entanglement causes us to forget about Krishna and focus in a material way. And then we again, then we again, we're lost. Grateful, eternally grateful to you, Maharaj Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jyoti. And thank you for your nice donation. I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, you liked Guru Maharaj Ji, the gift. It, I made it from my hand and I was, uh, I was not sure to gift you. But later on, I thought to present you. Thank you. I was not perfect in that. No, it was perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, to you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, Sukhakar Krishna Prabhu, please go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Chandramani Maharaj, Dandar Pranam. Actually, I was in Vrindavan from, from 10th to 13th of this month. So I could see all the other Maharaj, Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj, and they all came up for a marriage. But I could not get you, and I was not having a telephone number, and I couldn't get you, so I could not get your darshan, Maharaj. Actually, I went for a marriage, and Japatak Maharaj came, and many other Maharaj came, but I was asking for you. They're telling me, we don't know when Maharaj is there. So I, I, I didn't get the opportunity to see you, Maharaj. Mayapur. Right? So, Mayapur, yeah. You said, no, you're going to be in Mayapur for some day. So I thought I can get the blessing from you and meet you and, you know, and fall at your feet. So I'm very unfortunate that I, I couldn't see you after coming all the way. I would have been happy to meet you. I'm still here. <laughs> Maharaj, one question I want to ask Maharaj. Uh, this, uh, we are doing a Krishna consciousness, but I find that the mind is actually sabotaging. It is in the part of the whole body senses and mind. The mind is always putting same side goal. We think mind will cooperate with us to go back home back. But the mind will pull out doing everything against, you know, trying to good blocks. So how to get out of the, how to do the mind control and, you know, mind should become our friend and uh, we should become Goswami. Can you just give some suggestion, Maharaj? Yeah, I can give you two verses. Uh, where's our host? She can put up the verses. Where is she? Where's our host? Yes, Maharaj, can you say the number of the verses? Oh, yeah, Vanita, yeah. Go to Bhagavad Gita, um, hmm. chapter, chapter 9. Yes, Maharaj, verse number, Maharaj. Verse 34, I believe it is. Okay. No, that's not the verse. Oh, oh, near. That's not the verse I'm looking for. It's, um, hmm, let's see. Let me think of the verse, chat and the number, the name of the verse. Um, Chanchala Himana Krishna Pramati Balabhadra. Ah. That is okay. a chapter. No, that's that's not the one. It's Chanchala Himanakrish. Maybe it's 634, isn't it's it? 630. Yeah, uh, 630. Yeah, Maharaj, I okay. Chanchala is the first word. Try 634. Yeah, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj, it's 634 only. I'm putting it on. Okay. What are the next verse? Two verses you told? Yeah. Chanchilahi Mana Krishna Pramati Balabad Ridhatashya Ham Nigraham Banya Vayaridam Saduskaram. So Arjuna is speaking this verse. Hmm. The mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, I think it's more difficult to control than controlling the wind. Next yes, verse, 35. 
Go to verse number 35. And Krishna answers in this next verse. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Samsayam Mahabaho Mano Durna Gridham Shalam Abhyasenam Tukanteya Vairagena Chagrihate. Lord Krishna says, I am son of Kunti. It is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it but it is possible by suitable practice and by deep. Attachment. Uh, suitable also means constant. Okay. Constant practice and detachment. So if you constantly practice devotional service and detach yourself from material activities, this is the way to control the mind. Gradually. So, thank you, Mara. Mara, that means it is Satatam Kirti and Toma. You said no, suitable practice means continuous, no, uninterrupted. So that yeah, means it continues. On, on, yeah, continuous devotional service, uninterrupted. The, one should be thinking every minute, well, how can I serve the Lord? Every minute, oh. every second. So if you have nothing practical to do, you can always chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You can read books. You can associate with devotees. You can go to the programs. If you have responsibilities to do you can do them in the in the mood of serving the lord with 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 your with your mind your body your senses your intelligence your words there's always ways to serve the lord if you're not sure we have the spiritual masters there to tell you the way you can do it thank you mara that means hi to ki apratiyata uninterruptedly Selflessly keep serving the Lord always throughout without gap. That is the that is the success of bhakti. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dhanur Pala Maharaj. Thanks for the question. It was good. Seek your blessings, Maharaj, always. Thank you, Sukta Krishna Prabhu. Pralamanam Prabhuji, please go ahead, Prabhu. Thank you very much, Mataji, for allowing me to speak. And Danvar Pranam uh, Maharaj. Uh, my question is regarding the Panchopasana which you referred. Uh, you know, even if I was born in a Vaishnava family and raised up in, in India, uh, anyone in India cannot escape the influence of demigod worship in his sight, you know. I grew up all worshipping Lord Sri Krishna and uh, still, you know, the respect, the, you know, the impression we have about demigod worship. And uh, I was fully in, into it before I read Sri Prabhupada's books. And then on that, from there, I have now real perspective regarding their positions and what we should do in order to solely focus on Sri Krishna Bhakti. Uh, mm. Currently, I'm in Las Vegas for last so many years and we are, uh, there was no Hare Krishna temple, Iskon temple. So there was one Sanatan temple, which uh, is, it has been there for 20 years and I've been associated with that temple. They give me opportunity for preaching Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. And since then, I've been distributing books and doing little prachar there. Uh, there are deities of uh, Sankara Bhagavan, Ganapati, and uh, Durga Devi and all that. So what I do in order to, you know, not to offend or disrespectful, I pray to them with uh, Brahma Sanghita Slokas for Sankara Bhagavan, for uh, Durga Ji, and for Ganesh Ji. So my question is, that should, you know doing that also reinforces my faith in them so <laughs> is it okay to do that or you know to because i heard some people say that don't go to such temples and i i, I go there for the purpose of distributing Prabhupada's books and uh, yeah. charing so uh, please guide me in this you know because i i do have a lot of faith uh, in this uh, panchoprasna kind of this thing Although now I realize for so many years after chanting that, you know, my focus should be 
solely on Bhagavan Krishna, as you said, that when you prepare for medical school, you know, you have to be focused like that. And I underwent that process long back, many years in my, before my life. So please get yeah, yeah, it. I'm okay, you're okay, you can worship anyway. And it doesn't matter who you worship, as long as you worship. That's the, uh, that's the mood. But if you want to pray to these different deities, it's, not, it's fine, but you have to pray to them for the right thing. Right. So it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, one can take help from any great personality in order to fortify, inspire devotion to Krishna, just like many people who formerly were, are, were uh, Shiva Bhaktis became Krishna Bhaktis. Many people came to Krishna from Shiva. You go through our movement, you'll find hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of devotees who used to worship Shiva before we came to Krishna. And she, uh, because they were trying to understand, they were thinking Shiva was the best or Shiva is the supreme. So they were worshiping Shiva as the supreme or the highest. But Shiva, because he is Vaishnava Nan Yata Shambhu, he is the best of all devotees, he'll guide that worship towards Krishna. Although he's accepting it, and then he'll he'll push it on towards Krishna. And eventually devotees devotees start to come in contact with devotee, Krishna devotees after worshiping Shiva for a long time. But the recommended process for any of these other devas is to pray to them for Krishna Bhakti. We can do that. We can pray to them for Krishna Bhakti. Uh, that thing... Um, just like there is one great person, his name is Govinda Das. He's the brother, brother of Ramachandra Kaviraj during the time of Naratam Das Thakur after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. So Ramachandra Kaviraj became a disciple of Lord Chaitanya, uh, of, uh, of uh, a worshiper of Lord Chaitanya due to his association with Srinivasacharya and Naratam Das Thakur. In other words, he became a Vaishnava. Now, Govinda Das was working, worshipping Durga Devi. He was a staunch Durga worshiper. And after he saw his brother becoming a Vaishnava, he started to wonder. And he was thinking. And then one night, it's mentioned that in a dream, Durga Devi appeared to him, his worshipful deity, and she told him, you know, you should worship Krishna. Your, what your brother is doing is what you should be also doing. So his worshipful deity, Durga, told him, worship Krishna. And he did. He, he's that person who wrote that famous song, Bhaja Huremana Sri Nanda Nandana, Bhaja Charana Vindari. Very beautiful, deep in devotion, Bhajan. So these deities, these other deities, we don't worship them according to the rules and regulations of their worship. We, we, we may pray to them for devotion to Krishna. So we can do that, and they will also help us. Because they know, they know who's the highest. You might ask, why are there so many levels of worship? Because people are, not, people are on the different levels of practice. You mentioned that. But if you want the ultimate, or you want the goal of all worship, then as it says, yogi nam api sarvesham matkatendanat manaha vajitam vajite sravam te me yukta kamo mataha. Out of all the yogis, the bhakti yogi is the highest of all yogi. Krishna says that. So there are different forms of worship, but there, there, those goals are not the actual goal. They're just a step up in material life. That's all. Ganesh, Surya, Durga, they give material benedictions in different forms. Shiva gives liberation. And uh, which means the Gyanis worship Shiva mostly, even the yogis. 
But the bhaktas, they understood that the goal is love of God, because love is the principle that satisfies the soul. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhu Kabbalnoi Shravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. In the hearts of all living entities, pure love for the Supreme Lord is there and naturally exists. So the soul will have to continue to sojourn in different bodies until it reaches the stage of bhakti. When it reaches the stage of bhakti and then it executes the process of prema bhakti, or pure devotional service, then it is, has achieved the ultimate process. And then it's just a matter of time before they achieve the goal of going back to Godhead. We have to stay in this material world, life after life, unless we worship Krishna in devotion. That's just a fact. Is it okay if I offer my prayers like Govinda, Madhi, Purushan, Kshiram, Yatha, Devikar, Sankara, Bhagavan, Yad, Pad, Palla, Vigam, Vinidhar, Kumbhudan, Yatu, Ganesi, and Chaya, Vya, Sabuna, Bhavarti, Durga. Are these bona fide to do, to do this, you know, in front of just the deities pray. like that? Just pray. Pray yeah. to we can glorify Krishna in front of these deities. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. But don't ask for, don't ask for anything material. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You're just asking for helping me to distribute books here. That's all. That's, what we That's ask. good. That's bhakti, yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful answer. Silpesh, uh, yeah, Prabhuji, please go ahead, Prabhuji, with your question. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I just wanted to understand, when you say uh, people worship Shiva for liberation, what do you mean by liberation as opposed to like what we do as a devotional service? Devotional service includes liberation. But liberation doesn't include devotions. Liberation means free from all material desires and activities. And one will achieve some, some higher destination. But Aruna Krishna Padam Padam Padantiyada, unless people go, once they achieve liberation, they can go ultimately to bhakti from there. But not necessarily. They can also fall down again into the material world. So liberation, unless it's bhakti liberation, there are four four kinds of bhakti liberation. But there is the impersonal liberation by which people worship, and that is sahuja mukti. And that means to merge into the body of the Lord, emerge in. Um, so that's temporary, and because there's no devotional service in that. One again falls down. This verse from spoken by Lord Brahma that they rise very high on the spiritual platform, but because they don't have any regard for the lotus feet of the Lord, they again come back to the material world to take up material activities. That's explained in the very first um, verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, verse 111. So, um, yeah. That's temporary, and it's not it's not completely fulfilling because there's no service. If I if I tell you to uh, if I say here's a nice place, it's very peaceful. There's none. You'll never have any unhappiness. You stay here in this nice peaceful place, but you're all alone. Nobody's else with you. You're just in this nice peaceful. Can you be happy in that? <laughs> Prabhupada makes that analogy and said, This is what liberation is. You get a nice peaceful environment and you feel that you feel relief from the stress of material life. But you you don't have any spiritual activities. Therefore, you you, you can't stay there unless you wake up to the reality that there is something higher. And that's possible. The four Kumaras were Brahmavatis. They had achieved Brahman realization. They had achieved full liberation. But when they came in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord, which was decorated with tosi leaves and sandalwood paste, 
they become they became Krishna Bhakti Bhaktas. So usually the Mayavadis or many of the impersonalists, they worship Lord Shiva for some uh, material, uh, freedom of material suffering. Is this what people often term as moksha, moksha? Moksha, moksha means liberation, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Marge. Thank you so much. That's very yeah. But we want to go to bhakti, not moksha will not satisfy the soul. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Puja Arara Mataji, please go ahead with Mataji. Say question. Mataji, please unmute. Please unmute Mataji. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanvat Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, Maharaj, uh, here in India, today is we observe uh, Mahashivratri. So I want to uh, I want to give my best wishes to all the devotees. As we all know that Vaishnava Nam Yatha Shambhu. Uh, Maharaj, my question is, could we ask uh, Shiva for uh, removing obstacles of our bhakti path? Yeah. Yeah. Very sure. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Shamkari Mataji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my invitation to the Most Shila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very beautiful class. <clears throat> and I like the example of um, Arjuna. You see, he is so focused. So that that's how we should be focused toward Krishna, not looking at any other demigods or something like that. So <clears throat> in our other group, we preach in local language. The devotees ask the same question over and over again. Can we worship demigods? And our answer is same all the time. So how to, you know, uh, make their faith in Krishna? Like, you know, they they grew up uh, worshipping demigods. And uh, suddenly we tell them that um, no need to worship demigods. We have to focus on Krishna. So they say, oh, it's okay. Can we do this? Can Like Mataji said, today is Mahashivratri. Everybody will go to Shiva temple for worship. And uh, actually in uh, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, we learn why we should do this. And outside, we learn how we should do it. They, they, they don't know why we worship Shiva. They just say, oh, it's Shivratri. And uh, they are uh, so much focused on Falashruti. What do we get from, from that? Whatever uh, is the story, they don't focus on. They say, they just focus on Falashruti. That, uh, oh, we, we worship not Shiva. We get this, 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 this. And that's why we have to offer milk and flowers. Um and this and then there is a big line for doing that. They're trained like that because people grow up like that. Yeah. They, they have that training but Krishna explains that whatever the demigods can give is supplied by me. Yeah. So the demigods can only uh, they can't give you they can't give you, they can only give you material benedictions. But material benedictions are, are doesn't mean you're going to be happy, even if you get the material gain. The happiness is not guaranteed. The material life doesn't give you happiness. It gives you uh, various types of suffering. <laughs> 
So they're only increasing their suffering, that's all. If they worship Krishna, very simply, just by chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, offering their food and taking, taking the remnants of the food, uh, then they can um, easily move forward. So we encourage them to, uh, you can't, many times you can't convince them to stop. They're just, because they're so fixed on doing that. Yeah. Just like this before Govardhan Puja every year, there's a whole series of worship of the different devas. You know, Nav Navaratri or something. Um, yes. And people worship, but why did Krishna lift Govardhan Hill at that particular time? Just to say that, um, just to say that the, the residents of Vrindavan, they worshiped Krishna. And, and the whole story of Govardhan is that Nanda Maharaj wanted to worship Indra. And Krishna discouraged them from worshiping and told them to worship Govardhan Hill and the cows. And he did it. So the pur purpose of Govardhan's Leela at that particular time in the calendar is to show that, you know, that the ultimate worship is Krishna. So people want people don't want to worship Krishna because they think Krishna is going to make their life difficult for them. <laughs> he's going to take away this. He's going to take away that, and he's going to make my life so difficult. Yeah. Uh, all the Rajavasis and Nanda Maharaj and everybody they were. Uh, listening to Krishna, whatever Krishna says, they are ready to do it. Same Not with, uh, same with you know, all the Westerner um, devotees like you. You were given up everything for Srila Prabhupada. But uh, Indians, they don't want to give up. They just keep on arguing. Why not this? Why not that? Like that. Yeah, that's there. Even even now in our society, people worship Durga while they're still worshiping Krishna. They even put a deity of Durga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's material life is very attractive, but it's on it the. The essence of material life is the attraction, not the not, not the activity itself. What makes material life is the attraction. It's the attraction that makes material life, but not the activity itself. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for hearing that. Yes, Kerlip Mataji, please go ahead, Mataji, with the question. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble language and says, All glory is to Shira Prabhupada and all glory is to you and all the Sambha devotees. Um, I have learned that uh, uh, the difference. Uh, Entity, the different demigods uh, mentioned in the good way in, in different days. For instance, now it's talk about very much about Shiva, Lord Shiva. And I studied uh, Lord Shiva in Shirma Bhagavatam. And even in Shirma Bhagavatam, they really, it it's really um, gives him a very, very good uh, place uh, beside the uh, Ganjai beside uh, 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 other other the entity and so on. So is it is it okay just to just for that day to just thank him or worship him just for that day, but not the rest of the day, or you shouldn't at all. 
वो शेप है कृष्णा Mm-hmm. Bajate is the word. Bajate is referred to only for Krishna. But if you go to Bhagavad Gita, the last verse in the sixth chapter, read that verse and read the the purport. Read that, yeah. Write it down. Six forty-seven. Sixth chapter, verse number forty-seven, which is the last verse in the Bhagavad Gita. About Bhagavad Bhagavad Ch- in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. It tells you all about the nature of worship. Mm-hmm. So, just worship Krishna, and Shiva will be satisfied. But may I ask, how come even Lord Shiva and many many other uh, demigods say they don't know Lord Krishna? I don't. I don't get it. They. They should know Lord Krishna, right? How come they say they don't know him as well? Uh, go to verse number. Uh, go to the sixth chapter again. Uh, go to go to the sixth chapter, verse number twenty twenty seven. I think six twenty seven. Six. Uh, where's our where's our host? Come on, she's yeah yeah yeah, Maharaj. I'm putting that Maharaj. Yeah. Six twenty-seven. Yes, Maharaj. I think it's twenty-seven. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. No, let's see. That's not the verse. Uh, let me see. No, oh, oh, no. I'm sorry. Seven twenty-seven. Sorry, I'm I'm off on my chapters tonight. Seven twenty-seven. No, seven twenty-six. I got it now. Verse seven twenty-six. Vedaham samati tani. That's it. That's it. Madhu Vedana Kashana. Translation. Oh Arjuna, as the supreme personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me, no one, no one knows. Yes. It's not easy to know Krishna. That's what those great demigods are saying. Nobody knows Krishna fully. They know Krishna up to a certain certain level, but they don't know him fully. That's what it, that's what they're saying. And Krishna says here, but me, no one knows. He's referring to fully. You can go to verse seven, four, seven three in this same chapter, and Krishna says the same thing again. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Seven three. Ah, the sentence many should can answer. And from your own random, so not to come to have to share my personal moment. Exactly. It's the same here. Uh, there are no one knows him. Yeah. Manu sanam sahasri shu kasti yata de sura yata tama visit hanam kasti maybe. Out of many thousands of men, one may endeavor for perfection, 
of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Hardly one. What I mean, I can understand us people as men, uh, uh, human. I can understand that uh, because of the Maya and everything. But what I don't get is God and demigod. Even they uh, got uh, affected by Maya? No. But to know Krishna in full is not, is not, it's practically impossible. He's so great, it's not possible. What they're saying is they know Krishna up to a certain extent. You can know Krishna up to a certain extent, but you can't know Krishna in full. That's all. That's what this verse is saying. Hardly knows me, hardly one knows me in truth. Fully. Please give me blessing so that I can understand him better. <laughs> please, please. Give Just me chant Hare Krishna, that's all. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hema Mataji, please go ahead. Oh, Lalita Tangi got a nice verse. Where is that from, Lalita Tangi? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please uh, accept my humble obeisances and thank you so much for the very, very wonderful class. It's like you're performing surgery in our heart, removing the attachment uh, that we have. So this is from 10 to Maharaj. Yeah, neither the host of the demigods or the sages knows know my origin. Indeed, I am the uh, I am the source of the demigods and sages. So many places, Krishna uh, illustrates his position. It says that even Krishna can't know himself fully, so he becomes Lord Chaitanya in order to find out. Don't ask a question on that, Scarlett. Don't worry. Just listen. <laughs> even, even, yeah, the Lord doesn't know himself fully. So in order to understand him fully, he becomes his devotee in the form of Lord Chaitanya. That's the purpose of. Okay. Yeah, hey, thank me. you, Maharaj. One more. Let me, let me has a question. Dhanwad Pranam, Maharaj. Beautiful class. Uh, I uh, have a question along what lots you've already answered. So me uh, also starting as a, you know, in my family with lots of Durga Devi worship and Shiva Puja and all that and move towards Krishna consciousness. So at this point, like, I mean, with the discussion we've had so far that, uh, you know, we can ask uh, Seon Maharaj. Ratri Shiva to give us Krishna Prema. But would would this, as a person who's just trying to practice a little bit of Krishna consciousness, would, would even doing this qualify as a distraction and not being focused on Krishna? It can. It can. So therefore, the best way if you want to that's a, that's a, that's a concession. But for those who are attached to the, these devas, better to worship them for and for devotion to Krishna. But if you want to do it in a very simplified way without getting attracted, then just worship the spiritual masters or the great sages in the line of Vaishnava tradition. They will give you those blessings that will give you fast, uh, fast progress of, on the path of devotion. Their mercy is the full mercy. So we have our, you know, our great sages and saints. We can we can pray to them and our spiritual master. That's the easiest and direct and recommended way. This other way is more is less direct, and as you said, you can get distracted also. Thank you, Maharaj. 
थैंक यू सो मच महाराज फॉर वंडरफुल क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सेशन पूजा माता जी एज आस्क सर क्वेश्चन कैन वी प्रे टू लॉर्ड शिवा टू रिमूव ऑब्स्टिकल व्हाट शी मीन इज टू रिमूव द ऑब्स्टिकल्स लाइक हेल्थ इश्यूज सो दैट वी कैन गुड सर राधा राम अदर मोर परफेक्टली दैट्स व्हाट शार इंटरेस्ट इन महाराज शी जस्ट पोस्टेड इन द चैट it says that we that lord shringadev removes obstacles and pray to lord shringadev yeah thank you so much maharaj yeah he is the one that, that is the power that can remove obstacles very fast the demigods have to get power from the lord to give you that benediction you're asking for but the lord directly can give it in the form of the shringade that's why ganesh who is recommended to for worshiping for removal of obstacles he worships lord the shringade <laughs> ganesh is the devotee of lord the shringade thank you mara mara do you have some time mara scarlet mata ji has some uh, question we were running out of time and i just got an important call i had to reject so i think we've been on an hour and a half so far so. yeah yeah thank you so much mara uh, okay, thank you so sure. much for a wonderful class mara we are very grateful to you and we look forward for your resuscitation and again and again in the future mara let us pay obeisances to maharaj and all the vaishnavas vancha kalpa tarubhya vancha kalpa tarubhya shukru mahasindhu vidanam parane bhyo vaishnava bhyo namah vaishnava bhagavatam ki jai jai ki jai jai santo swami mala maharaj ki jai all glories to god thank you thank you so much maharaj krishna